it's really good to be here. I was at the other one last year, and it's uh, an amazing event. It's amongst the ones that is absolutely my must-attend event, I have to say that. And also very interesting is the last time I was here, it was, I think, myself and maybe one other talking about app engagement. And now it's an entire session in the afternoon that tells you where this is going. You know, that we're understanding and more importantly, internalizing that a download is not a user, a download is not a customer, we have to do something beyond that. Based on that, what I've done is actually I've changed my talk, James, because um, I just released a report about in-app engagement and in-app um, communication. And uh, since that's doing so well, it's a free to download report, so I'm not plugging anything here, just download it, read it, enjoy it, uh, I decided to to focus on that topic. So my topic instead is also the title of my report for Giga Ohm Research, which is Building Brand Engagement Through In-App Communication. A little bit about myself, um, just to give you an idea, I've been in the industry, I call myself a seasoned mobile <laughs> veteran or analyst. I'm an analyst at GigaOM. I have my own company where I do consulting and content marketing, which is Mobile Groove. I'm a nine-time author, writing books about mobile, all aspects of mobile, including the Everything Guide to Mobile Apps, but more importantly, if you look up in the other corner, Apponomics, which is a free to download book. Um, it's uh, 300 plus pages. It is really the primer for the industry. I'm really proud of it. It was eight months of my life. But uh, beyond that, it uh, has been taken on at universities as required reading, as, as course material. So Apponomics, if you want to download it, as I said, free to download, and uh, reports about apps. So I've been looking at apps as a business for quite a while now, um, not just as an app as a, as a concept. And uh, this is the report that just came out last week, actually, where what I've done is I've condensed that for our presentation today. So I'm not telling you anything you don't know. We know there's a lot of apps, app explosion, depending on the figures you want to look at. Uh, Gartner being very bullish, I think we're hitting 270 billion app downloads by 2017, up from 80 billion in 2013. The big point is there's a lot of apps, okay? So that's reason to celebrate, or so we think. Because then we say, well, shift happens. We have a lot of apps, but what are we actually doing with them? And this is really interesting because I started out very focused on gaming and entertainment because that's where the action, that's where the revenues were in apps. And I'm really excited. And the people over at Lowdown, if they're still here, will be actually also happy um, that you know there's a huge future in utility apps, other apps, because this chart is showing us that although. Um, Gaming is strong. Gaming strength is there. Game strength is, it, but it's slowing down. And what we're seeing is messaging, other apps, other other sectors, other verticals. Um, in my book, uh, Apponomics, I looked at some research from MIT that. Uh, so it's not just me. You know, there's stats underlying this that show a huge trend to edutainment, which is education, games, and purposeful learning. At the same time, and we've heard a couple of these stats today, we had a couple from Mick earlier and some others, but at the same time, these ones here are from Nielsen. Basically what is happening is we have a lot of apps, we're doing more with them, so that's great. That means you know even if you don't have a gaming app, you can build a business. And on top of that, what are we actually doing? Well, we're using 30 apps around 36 hours a month. So basically, a lot of apps doing a lot more, but we don't use that many, or at least 30 is you know, average. So what is a constant within all this change is that we still want to do what we want, how we want it, you know, it's about us. And if you keep that in mind throughout, then it will, you will actually sort of have a mantra to follow in your app business, because what matters? The user matters. What does the user want? They want what they want, how they want it, when they want it. They want it in context. And another constant is, and this is borne out by other research, is that we also want two-way conversations. So yes, you know, we have an interaction with a company or a brand or an app developer, but it's not a one-way interaction. We expect um, some sort of recognition that there's a social contract going on here. You know, I downloaded your app. In a way, we have a relationship. Um, you do not abuse it, obviously. You do not spam me and you do not bother me or annoy me, but you also don't ignore me. You see, there's a two-way conversation going on here. 
<laughs> so what's at your disposal for this? Um, I'm a favorite of all of the above, and I think that actually as this goes on, you will see more and more that it's outbound communications for your app that you're managing, not just your marketing. And if you see it as outbound communications for your app, then you're using some text for people who want to interact that way with you. Remember, it's about them, not about you. Some people want text. Some people want push notifications. I've heard a lot of people say, well, you know, it's spam and we're getting a lot of them. They're opt-in, and if you personalize them and use the tools at your disposal to do that, as I will show shortly, you can have great results with push notifications. I don't want to say that that shouldn't be in your toolbox of capabilities to achieve this. In-app messaging, in-app push, I'm very excited about that, and I'll tell you about that shortly why. And also, um, in-app chat, which I think is probably going to be a section maybe next year here about how do you do in-app chat because it's going to be that important in interacting with your users. So power of push, I've gone into this a little bit and I'm sure you know about it yourself or thinking about using it in your app or maybe already using it. Um, why use it? Okay, it's permission-based. Yes, we heard about the spam, but there are rules of good push from, for example, Urban Airship, a free-to-download guide, the rules of good push. Take it, read it, internalize it. It will tell you about the frequency. How often do you push? What do you push? What context do you push? I mean, if you've been in the industry as long as I have, and if you look back into your mind and remember the rules of permission-based marketing, it's very similar. It's the same thing almost. So these rules apply here. You're not learning something new. You're simply applying it to a new channel. Multi-purpose, meaning that you can, um, you know, when people are engaging with your app, uh, you can do it for different things. You can retarget. You can do testing. You can do feedback. You can say invite a friend. You can you can do lots of things with push beyond just say, hey, do you want to get you know a notification from me? You can use that to a call to action. Cost effective, because there are a lot of companies out there offering push, and you have a lot to choose from. There are different models. There are models that are very developer friendly. For example, Process One is one company that I investigated in my report. Urban Airship has models. Some of them are based on volume. Some of them are based on messages delivered. Um, some are based on uh, you know different metrics. There's enough differences in pricing that you'll find the one you need. And of course, measurable and trackable, because you're interacting with the message, there's more data to be digging into. Okay. Um, in-app push, and we've been talking about that also a little bit. So in-app messaging, this is on the device. So push was to the device, in-app messaging is in the device. So it's happening within the app. There's some advantages there. It's not having to be sort of delivered from a server because it's inside the app. I don't want to go into the mechanics, but I'm happy to discuss that during the break or afterwards. Um, can be personalized. In-app uh, push notifications can also be personalized, but you're asking the user to personalize them. Here you can personalize two actions within the app. Um, Context, I like this because it happens while you're in the app in that particular context, so it can be very much a contextual message, a contextual call to action, something that's, again, within the experience itself. And another one I'm fond of is you can use it for A-B testing, and in many ways it's cheaper to do A-B testing this way than pushing to the device, because you're on the device. Um, so let's talk about some what what is happening out there, some of the examples. Now this is, for example, what you'll be hearing about more, or let me put this way, anyone here aware of the in-app inbox and the power of the in-app inbox? Okay, so I'm not going over material you don't know, uh, that you do know. Um, so this is the case here. This is a case study, um, actually the ABC News app. What I find interesting about it is they've used the concept of personalized push and an inbox to re-engage with the users. So what you're doing, and this works out really well in news, but you could do it in other verticals as well. Um, you're saying, here's your news. 
so it's breaking news, but we're saying that's your push notification. Star what you want as favorites and you'll get more news about what you star and keep in your inbox. But if you think about it, what does that let you do? If we harness the idea of the in-app inbox, then you're able to be top of mind with your users long after you've engaged with them. Because just like in the online way of thinking, you know, you're in the inbox. You could deliver, if you weren't ABC News, you could deliver a coupon, you could deliver an offer. You can re-engage within the inbox. Again, another way to be present, top of mind, in the mind of your users. And this is from the Urban Airship case study. I thought this was very interesting. I've actually written a, a column on this. I found this so interesting because it's proof in my mind of uh, the way to re-engage. And you see that 70% of the audience is, use, is using the personalized push to show their preference for the news they want to receive and also keeping it in the inbox. It's also been a trigger to look at more videos. Again, videos playing a hugely important role here. So my point is that it's not only then push the notification, you swipe it, you've read it, you have it. There's an inbox within the app where you can keep these notifications and importantly, because it's on the device. If you've decided you sent a coupon you know, a week ago or a month ago for 50% off, and now you've decided it's summer, let's do something for 80% off, you don't have to send another coupon. You update the content in the inbox. When the user opens it, they're going to see the 80% instead of the 50% because you are able to update and refresh the content in the app yourself, and so it's constantly fresh. And that, I think, is a real advantage here. Um, this is just a slide to show you how this works, the mobile mechanics of it. You know, you get the app. Unfortunately, it's a bit maybe small here. But you get the app and you can interact with it. You mark your preference. You keep it in your inbox and it's there. It will be updated over time. Every time it's swiped again, it's the content that you want to push out. And we're talking about in-app chat. And, um, Again, much of this is sort of online meets mobile app in a way, and I think that's exciting because that way we have um, lessons we already know and we're applying it to the mobile app. It's not new, it's not entirely new, but it, it has a new value, a new utility within an app. And this is a company I came across while I was doing my research for the paper, because I was looking at, you know, what, it, what, what are we doing with in-app chat? Well, what is it? Basically, you're using the OTT channel, right, the over-the-top channel, the messaging channel native to the app to, you, to be messaging with your users in the app. So it's almost like um, uh, WhatsApp meets app maintenance, app feedback, app marketing, etc. That's the same sort of channel here. And there are companies that have SDKs, and you can install them, some of them, <clears throat> excuse me, some of them, for example, in the case of HitMob, it's in real time. So what you're seeing here, and um, I had a video, but I have another video to show you, I didn't want to give you too many, is you're seeing that there's a chat session taking place in real time between the user and the, you know, the app company, the app developer, and that can be about anything. That can be like, I'm having a problem with my game right now. I can't get to level whatever. Oh, well, let me help you, right? And this is happening in the app, and you might say, you know, what is the value here? I think the value here is very much, again, engaging with your customer, keeping your customer, CRM. I mean, you are an app business. All businesses have CRM. I think it's a wise idea to look at the tools available to you to engage and perfect or improve your CRM. And I want to show you, in a second I'll show you this, um, as context, uh, this exists in the States. I wish it existed in Germany where I'm based, but uh, it'll be a while. I think you'll have it first in England before I have it. Um, this is the Mayday service from Amazon. It's available right now on their Kindle. Again, quite jealous. And as of uh, mid-June, available for the Fire Phone. So this gives you a taste of where this can be going. Mayday. Thank you for pressing the Mayday button. How can I help you? Whoa, who are you? <laughs> I'm Amy, a tech advisor for your new Kindle Fire. I didn't realize I get a live person. Yep, we're here 24 seven. We can draw on your screen and even show you how to use different features. So I can just press the Mayday button and you're here to help? Hit Mayday and I'm coming to the rescue. Amy? 
I like you. Aww. <laughs> Introducing the revolutionary Mayday button, only on the new Kindle Fire HDX. Thanks for pressing Mayday. How can I help? Hey, my niece is coming over this weekend, and I know she's going to want to use my new Kindle Fire. No problem. The Fire's great for kids. But I don't want her to be glued to it the whole time. Gotcha. Just use Kindle Free Time. It lets you set limits on how long kids can watch and play. So it'll tell her when time's up? I don't have to? Yep. Cool. Because who could say no to this face? Aww. Introducing the revolutionary Mayday button, only on the new Kindle Fire HDX. Okay, there you go. She won't stop talking. <laughs> and she's real. No, the, the reason I show that, and I, I mention that also in my report, is, you know, it's not here yet, but you can see it coming, and you can imagine that coming. I mean, when I go to app events, and I've written, you know, two books on apps, I listen to app developers, I go to these conferences, I hear that... And you're hearing, you know, some of the top tips. Well, what do you do? You're an indie developer. What are you supposed to do within the first few minutes after someone downloads your app? And the number one thing you're supposed to tell them how to do, because they aren't like you. You love your app. You built your app. You sleep. You, you Maybe you dream and code, right? No. They didn't want to know, how do I use the app? How does it work? What do I do? What are the features? Um, I was talking to a very, very large, um, important and popular music app company, and they were saying, one of the problems is we have a fantastic music app. I said, yeah, I know, I love it too. I said, yeah, but you know, people who aren't like, you know, early adopters don't understand all the great things you can do with it. And I thought, yes, because when you open it up, it doesn't tell you. And so you can see that as we do more with our apps, there might be the requirement on you as developers and companies to offer services like the last one I was showing you. I don't think it's that far away. Uh, certainly in-app chat as text is there now. So couple things to leave you with because I believe that app engagement is really the one thing that's going to separate sort of the leaders from the also rands. I believe that very strongly because at the end of the day it's a business. It's about you know acquiring your customers, keeping them happy, keeping them coming back and one of the ways to do that is to be very useful. I'll leave you with just one thought about the Mayday service because I read this in a TechCrunch article and I thought this was amazing. So it was going on about all the great things that people asked Mayday to do. And if you remember when we got Siri the first time around, uh, you might remember what happened there. We were asked at Siri, what's the meaning of life and all that kind of stuff. So we were sort of getting a personal relationship with that service. So they're asking Mayday, how do they get out of a specific level in a game where they're stuck? That gives you something to think about. So Mayday's telling them how to crack your game. Um, in the case of this, it was a lot of Angry Birds problems, but nonetheless. So I leave you with a couple of thoughts about why I think this is important. What can you do? You can keep in touch with your customers. You can drive traffic. You can drive calls to action. You can advise them with new app features. You can re-engage, which is what it's all about. Uh, deliver reminders, alerts, push notifications, what have you. Keep that conversation going. That's what it's all about. Again, as I said, segment your users for A and B testing and, uh, and gather feedback from your users, hopefully, for a better app experience. Thank you.